Yo, what's going on guys? Gonna be showing you a super cheesy Nocturne jungle strat to get you some free wins. This is an extremely snowball heavy build, so you don't want to be dying very much or doing coin flippy plays. Only take fights where you have a steep advantage of some kind. For this build, we're going to be rushing down Umbro Glaive, and we're not going to be taking refill because Nocturne clears full HP anyway, so this is an extra 150 gold where we can get into Umbral. Nocturne can generally get Umbral by the time he's level six, especially if, if you've gotten one to two successful ganks. And if you go for things like Futures Market, you can get it even sooner, but I would much rather have uh, Ultimate Hunter because Ultimate Hunter is just kind of insane. Their rune options for playing Nocturne like this is Hellblades, Electrocute, Lethal Tempo. I think Lethal Tempo gives you the most leeway because you can sort of transition into more of a bruiser build with things like Bork, Stride Break. You don't have to go full lethality. So for example, against their team, if they have a red cane, it would suck if we were playing Electrocute Nocturne. We're not going to be able to do anything to them. On Nocturne, you want to max your Q first, your E second, W last, but you want to get W level 2 because your W gives you a high baseline attack speed. It doesn't give you very much attack speed per level though, which is why you max it last. It only gives you an extra 5% per level, which is pretty low. At this point, we're going to get our W and chunk these guys down. You want to make sure you're fighting on top of your shadow trail. That way you're getting that extra AD and movement speed. Look at that pathing. Oh my goodness. You can still move around while you're on it to cut out the camp a little bit, but you don't want to get in the habit of just standing still. It's not a good idea. Look at that full health. We don't even need refill. There's a lot of meta junglers that don't need refill to where taking it is kind of troll. On champions of like Warwick, Fiddlesticks, Nocturne, it's completely unnecessary because you can get your first item rush that much faster. There's a lot of times in League where you go back to base, oh man, I'm short 120 gold. Waiting in Fountain for 120 gold is crazy. You don't wait in Fountain for anything really more than 60 at the max. So not taking refill gives you that extra opportunity and that faster tempo. And League's all about your advantage a you versus them type of thing so super super important to have that tempo you can press press them force fights against them and in their mind they think it's a coin flip when in reality if they press tab it is not a coin flip because you're at a steep advantage that is not a coin flip at all you don't not have to take these at the same time it's not necessary at all i'm gonna go ahead and just smite the blue buff get him out of the way just in case kane pops over there's a lot of junglers who will try to mess with you when you finish your clear. Especially when it's blue gromp like this. Nocturne finishes around 320. 325 like a uh, Master Yi. Oh, Kane already finished. I think Kane could be over here. I think we just showed on Scuttle, unfortunately. I'm going to ghost for this. I get absolutely nothing, and that is a sad day for Nocturne. All right, we just have to reset. Kane did actually he didn't do a full clear. I thought he got there a little early. He skipped a camp. He has 24 CS and he took Scuttle. Yeah, he literally skipped a camp. I thought so. He got there really fast because blue blue side's closer, like off of blue buff than red buff. And he got there way before me because he already finished it. He clearly smited it. Down goes the Kane. I wish Silas didn't coin flip that, because if he died there, it would have been so pointless. And we ended up wasting Ghost. On the bright side, Ghost is a short cooldown. And since we're farming this, we can gank top here in a second if we overstay a little bit. Likely, she doesn't have Ignite. She may not have Flash either. Just wait for her for a second. There she is. Lamb to the slaughter. She doesn't know it, though. Silas is pushing, so she's kind of just doing her thing. All right, I think she saw us. I'm just going to reset. Seems pointless to stay. She's going to play like that. She's con starting to concede the lane. She's not even stepping up to auto attack him. Now, granted, the wave's pushing towards her, but still. We should still be able to hit a timely umbral. Just not as fast as I would have liked. It's somewhat dependent on your initial ganks, and this was just not gankable at all. Silas should do fine, though. She's playing extremely passive and tassile. Is the range top laner? If you play like that, you lose the game by default. You simply don't win unless you're Kale or Vayne. There's there's very few range top lanes that are gonna outscale to the point where you can just start playing complete autopilot mode. 
tied CS with Kane. We both reset. We have better items, though. All we're going to do is full clear gank, full clear gank, full clear gank. That is the plan. It was also kind of not to put blame, but there's no reason for Silas to hard shove this wave. When I was standing right here, he should just let Nidalee walk up. It's the thing, a lot of laners, they don't understand the concept of how to get your jungler to gank. It's by making the lane gankable. That's the secret. If you're mindlessly shoving the lane without damaging your opponent, that is the definition of an ungankable lane. Now this looks gankable. Nidalee's pushing into him. She's out of mana, though. So she's not going to be able to do much. We're close to level 6, which is crazy because we haven't had a successful gank or really leached any minion XP. So yeah, she dies. Oh, no. Oh, he got her flash. He flashes. And we hit a 6 minute 36 level 6. Not bad. Kane's bot side. We'll go ahead and take these again. Might as well. Heavy farm fiesta game. We get absolutely zero kills. We'll still be getting Umbral super soon. Super, super soon. Kane just died. If I was Kane, I would go bot side because I think he started blue buff. He's not even going to be over here. Once again, shoved lane. Not really gankable. I just don't understand why people shove if they're not even going to roam. What's the point of just dumping the lane? It just doesn't make sense to me. There's nothing for me to cross over for. I'm sitting on R. I don't want to reset, but these laners do not want to get a gank. Just perma push, perma push, perma push. That's still not even really gankable. Yeah, I'll just take the kill. I'm dead, though. It is what it is. I want to back for Umbral, and I want to use my R and get an ultimate hunter stack. We'll take the death on that one. Absolutely. Red buff's up. Blue buff's coming up soon. We could even path top side clear down through bot side. We're, we're taking so long to get off these ganks. Kane against the Diana. It's got Conqueror. I feel like she should have won that though. Oh, she took Electrocute, that's why. Electrocute Diana's doo doo feces. Pretty much always go conk on that champ. Pretty much always. Our ultimate's on a cooldown, but we have Ghost and Umbral. We hit a roughly 8 minute Umbral, which is still pretty good considering how the early game went. There's a lot of waiting around for. Laners who simply don't want ganks. It happens sometimes. Sometimes you don't have gankable lanes. It is what it is. It happens. Bot lane is gankable right now. I don't have my R. If your R is on cooldown and you don't have boots on Nocturne, there's nothing to really gank. And this is the downside to shoving is you get ganked. You don't get ganks. You don't get ganks from your jungler, you get ganked by the enemy team. The uh, A big tip used a lot for people is shove the lane, shove the lane. But you have to do something off of it. Because there's the inherent risk of you get ganked for shoving lane. So if you just shove lane and then that's the end of the story, it's so pointless. You might as well just freeze near your turret and wait for a gank from your jungler. R's coming up, you might be able to get a double here. We have Ghost. They don't particularly have a lot of items. I should probably just wait for Lucian. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to save R. I'll go ahead and just Ghost it. Spell Shielded it, but I didn't Spell Shield anything. I still have R. This guy's dead. That's a double. We're on Ghost, so we're able to way out uh, maneuver them there. I want some XP from that. Might as well. We have R. This guy's dead. 100% he's dead. Get a point in our E. What does she get off him? She gets blue? His red buff should be up, right? 
I'll wait for Varus. I should be able to kill Varus solo. We have the Umbral. We're full item before anyone else in the game. 10 miles ahead because Umbral's basically a thousand gold cheaper than the first item rush you'd normally go on Nocturne. I just need space to kill him. This is all. Oh, he actually has Nash. I didn't realize that. Spell shield it. We get his flash. He goes straight into Silas because he couldn't see him because of my R. Nice. Very nice. Uh, where do we go from here? Maybe just reset for boots. Ours on cooldown anyways, and our camps are all split up. Might as well back at this point. We could just run Eclipse. Eclipse would be fine against their team. Or we could go Prowler. It's Prowler for the ultimate burst. We'll just run a hyper cheesy Nocturne page. <laughs> just R spam with objectives. Could run double herald. I kind of want to do a part two a little bit just because the early game was so doo doo feces. But if this game lasts longer than 25 minutes, we won't do a part two. It's just laners constantly coin flipping. The best junglers who play with that are AFK full clear junglers like Karthus Fiddlesticks. Nocturne falls into that category, but with this play style, you. With the Umbral Rush, you really want to have a successful gank early on. And if you don't get it, it slows you down. Definitely slows you down. This is our great option on Nocturne. Especially if you're ahead early on. I wouldn't say, like, it's not that early anymore, but we are ahead. To where having this on a lower cooldown, getting around the map with cheap tier 2 boots is quite nice. I don't have Ghost. Diana has R. She should just take this. I spell shielded nothing because he decided not to swing it at me. Shen gets a big R. This should, this chick's dead. She doesn't even realize it. Meow. Get up the blue smite. Cute. Down she goes. Absolutely gutted. Beautiful. Lethal Tempo still gave a lot of value there. It gave us a lot of attack speed. Sure, in that specific situation, we only autoed four times. So in theory, having Hellblades would have been slightly more efficient. Having Electrocute, I don't know if it would have been more efficient. Maybe. But let's say she was a bit tanker. Let's say she was a bruiser. Let's say she was a tank. We would have wanted to have Lethal Tempo 10 out of 10 times there. So The value Lethal Tempo gives on Nocturne is really, really high. Because you're going to hit him with your fear. Your fear scales per level. The your duration lower cooldown and uh yeah it's just the lethal tempo is kind of built for that oh he's gonna be mad when i take this i just don't even know why he's over here <laughs> i probably shouldn't have taken that since he had already done half of it but confused why he's even on that i'll smite that oh never mind I kind of need my team to rotate here. We get him with our fear. I got a ghost away or something. That went really bad. We got, we soaked the Varus R. They should die for it at least. Very nice. Darnrock shutdown isn't really worth though. Truthfully. Prowlers just gives a lot of damage. This item gives so much value, 15% increased damage. Diana has Electrocute, so she can't sustain fight. She's gonna have to play around her cooldowns. And down she goes. All right, it's time to go get Dragon. We need it. We absolutely need it, 200 AD. R is doing 300 damage alone, Q is doing 346. I don't think they're on it right now. I don't think I saw them go to it. Nidalee's dead. She's trolling. Got our spell shield. Q down. Walk into her. Down she goes. Clear this whole wave. We need to keep soaking gold and XP. And since we threw that shut down, we need to kind of make up for it. Our mid laner's dead anyways. So those minions would have gone to waste. I think they're bot lane reset. We might be able to kill Kane here. Where did he go? Oh, there he is. He's just going a random way. Might be able to cut him off here. Got him with a Q. He's not really sure where to go. Pop him with a fear. 
I feel fear still damaged him inside. Got her. Ooh. Okay, we couldn't get away from Varus, but he suicided to do it. He literally walked through two of my teammates to try to secure that kill. I think you've realized he was going to die either way. Yeah, this is definitely going to go a bit late game. They keep trading off gold. Silas has Conqueror. Nidalee's not going to scale. I don't know. I think we'll be fine late game, even with the full lethality Nocturne build, which I generally don't recommend. If you're going to go full lethality Nocturne, you really don't want to be dying. And we've certainly been dying a lot. At this point, could just go for more ability haste. Or we could push for kind of crit. We could go collector, another crit item, i.e. Don't want to stack up too much lethality. Could just pop back to bruiser items. Not a big fan of cam tank on Nocturne unless you rush it. I don't really like building it later in the build. Plus, they keep, kept nerfing Hillcut. It was really the perfect item before they kept nerfing Hillcut. Why are, why are they just getting dragon here? Because our mid lane's farming my Krugs. So makes sense. That actually makes a lot of sense. Farming jungle camps always seems more fun than farming minions. I can reach him with R. He's dead. I spell shield that. We use our prowess to get behind him and we can control where he's feared. Since the prowess puts us behind, we can fear him opposite direction. Goodbye, Varus. I'll be taking these. I gotta keep soaking. They have double dragons. We're gonna need to end early on these guys. We don't wanna take this late. Nidalee's gonna die for sure. She's just shoved up. Waiting to die. I've hit like five minute umbrals with this build this setup before it's just this game we couldn't get it zero successful ganks early on just a lot of walking around she's gonna run the other way oh no nidalee's running the other way this wave is worth a lot more than nidalee at this point i'm not gonna let her take my camps though certainly not certainly i wouldn't she doesn't have a turret for me to take, so I might as well get these camps. My R is up. Varus is dead. They don't even realize. I gotta go for Varus first. I'm on Ghost for the extensions. Nidalee watches and die, because what else is she gonna do? It's a Nidalee. Nidalee is a horrible champion who has to have a lead to do anything. She's been nerfed so much because of pro scene in a high challenger. She's not a rewarding champion to main or play at all. And it, oh man, if she falls behind, she gives no value. She has zero CC in our kit, no slows, nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Champions in League that don't really have CC, like Mastery and Vladimir. I mean, even Vlad has an AoE slow. But champions like that, they have good scaling. Nidalee doesn't. Simply doesn't. I'm level 13. I gotta get to the Samara. Down she goes. I wish I had R for that guy. Ah, oh, I really should get this Herald. This game is... We can't win with just kills is the thing. Everyone on our team's dying a lot, including myself besides Silas. They've been allowed to get every single dragon, so we kind of need to do some drastic stuff. Like get multiple kills and then dump a herald on their heads type of thing down goes pike down goes varus varus does it he has to hit you with autos first if he hits you with abilities on their own when he's ap they don't really do anything got him with the fear and who is this that's samir i almost died from the freaking turret oh my god now now this is when you'd want to lay herald they're all dead nidalee's on the other side of the map can one shot that with the umbral and it's time to dump this oh i'm dead i'm dead <laughs> what the fuck 
How was I in range? I actually just walked into turret and died. Luckily, it is just a execute, but that's not good. I'm gonna go grab some water. One sec. It's just a long base, essentially. It's a 30 second base. It sucks to die, but at the very least, they don't get my sh thousand shutdown gold. If they got our thousand shutdown gold, that would freaking suck. Oh man, it's tough to to buy at this point. I kind of do want to go collector though, or we could go for this. Yeah, I guess we'll just swap into kind of bruiser crap. I don't want to die and throw shutdown. If we give up thousand gold, I don't. I think winning's gonna be a lot harder, much much more challenging. Bold statement, I know. If they get a thousand gold, things are gonna get tough. Nidalee's dead if she goes for turret. She can't go for turret. Nidalee, why weren't you listening? Nidalee! Meow! <laughs> Goodbye, Nidalee. I'm going for dragon. You can block dragon auto, get more attack speed out of W. I'm not gonna bother doing that because I don't know where these guys are at and I don't wanna die. Our Q is giving us so much extra AD. <laughs> Holy crap. An extra 60. I like it. I think I need to turn here. All right, after I get this dragon. Oh. Is he still chasing? His teammates are dying because he's chasing me. If he would have helped his teammates, Samira might have actually just pented there. Hey friend. Oh, Varus Flash. Very cool. I have a bunch of attack speed now. Thank you, dude. Thank you, my friend. We soaked some of his uh, spell there with our W. We got 80% attack speed instead of our mere 40%. What a funny guy. It's really hard for a mobile champions with low CC to get away from Nocturne. Once you get that E on them, if you fear them, you get 90% move speed bonus into them, and they'll, they'll just die. There's no way for them to get away from that. Eclipse does work on Nocturne. It's not bad. But Prowlers gives ability haste, and Eclipse doesn't. So, usually lean more into Prowlers. Still have a 1,000 shutdown. Let's stay alive. Teammates are throwing for some reason. They're running past inhib to fight. That's that's next level right there. You just soak as many resources as we can. We could like clear his full jungle and then clear our full jungle. Depending on how many camps our teammates take. That's the thing, man. When people start doing stuff like that, it's it can be challenging to hold my lead because now well, he's going to go for Krux because he can't grab mid wave, bot waves far away. Looks like he might go for Scuttle. It's kind of dangerous for him to go for that because enemies are in that area. I don't even want to force a fight right now. I don't know where any of them are. If you have no idea where anyone is and then like I see Kane, what if he has three teammates over there? We need more vision than what we have from to going on an R with Lethality Nocturne. We don't want to throw a shutdown. I wish this circle was a little bit bigger. You do still get the bonus of being all the basically one tap wards. One auto counts as three autos. No one's coming for this wave. What is going on? No one wants it. Diana decides she's going to show and make them not step up for it. Very cool. I like that. Not going to go for that. He's going to have four teammates on him. Even if I kill him, if I die, it's not worth. I need more vision. Oh, I would have gone in there at that point. Maybe it would have been a mistake. <laughs> They're all circling super hard right now. Oh, hey, friend. Down she goes. Varus is going to die here. We actually got a lot of healing from Death's Dance. Death's Dance is a really interesting item. It heals you a lot more than you think if you're getting kills. 
gives you massive chunks of HP. Huge, huge, huge. Samir couldn't fight us at all. She's pretty much just as much gold spent as us if you look at her items. Now, if she had played it, it would have been closer. She still would have lost, though. We have a sizable level advantage on her. This game was really short and kind of boring early on. I have a much better game for you guys here in part two. Yo, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to part two of Nocturne in the Jungle. We have the same rune set, Lethal Tempo, Triumph, Tenacity, Last Stand, Eyeball Collection, Ultimate Hunter, Attack Speed, AD Armor. We're going to be going for Umbral into Prowlers again. This guy really thinks I'm going to let him do that. What the heck? He doesn't win this. I have Lethal Tempo. He's dead. <laughs> you can't fight Lethal Tempo, bro. Lethal Tempo is a way better rune than Hellblades for fights to the death. We're both a similar champion. Obviously, Rek'Sai's level 1 isn't great, but uh, I wouldn't say Nocturne's level 1 is insane either. So it's the Lethal Tempo diff. Anyways, we're going to be going for Umbral into... Uh, we're going to be going for Umbral into Prowlers. The thing about Eclipse is it doesn't give any ability haste, and Prowlers gives the same amount of kind of active damage while simultaneously giving 15% increased damage. That's what I really like about Prowlers. If you have Umbral Prowlers, you can kind of shred anything other than tanks. It takes a little bit longer, but that's why you have lethal tempo. You can still get through tanks if you need to. You can always pick up a Bork if they have a tank at any point in your build. Like second, third, second or sixth item, it doesn't matter. Bork's good on Nocturne for shredding. Their team doesn't have a tank, so we don't need to go for Bork. I'm gonna pull this out. I don't know who's watching. You never know when their support is going to do something sketchy like that. Especially when it's a long range support like a Nivea. Oops, we started the wrong ability. You don't really want E level 2. It's not going to ruin your clear if you get E level 2. It will slow you down a couple of seconds though. W level 2 is better. 30% constant attack speed is where it's at. E is only a bit of damage. Now, if I did get into a fight with an enemy champion, I may want to have E instead, but we're not really worried about fighting Rek'Sai right now. Kind of want to just Q it, auto attack. I was thinking about autoing first, but on Nocturne, since his initial auto is AoE, it would actually be best for us to Q first to close distance and hit the most of it. Because on the Raptor camp, you can't hit the whole thing with your Q unless you auto it first to line it up. That was my dilemma there. Got our W now, we'll find a nice little angle on this. Make sure you stay on top of your thing. That way you get the extra AD and whatnot. The extra AD is very important. Top of your darkness. I'm not sure where this Rex is at. Hopefully she doesn't invade us here. That would be very bad time for us. We'll go ahead and smite the blue buff. We don't want to lose all of our HP over nothing. Oh wait, I started refill. <laughs> I goofed. We didn't need refill. We could have gotten an even earlier Umbral, 150 gold sooner. Still finished around 320. Rek'Sai, four camp cleared. I think I'll just kill her right here. She's about to walk into me. We spell shield it and she's dead. She literally just died from that. Down she goes. We stood still. Rek'Sai can't see you. If you don't move, she has to be really, really close to you. Like, pretty much this close. So, yeah. Rek'Sai can be extremely easy to cheese, especially with your spell shield. There's not a whole lot she can do. I have a feeling this is going to be a short game, even if my teammates are dying early on. I'll hit a fast level 6 and then they lose. I'm going to go take her Krug. She only 4 camp clear. She's going to go for Bot Scuttle, obviously. And uh, I think minions just saw me there. Oh, wait, she took Krugs? That doesn't make any sense. She took Krugs, so she did. She did like blue into three camp topside. That's very weird clear. You don't see that very often. Uh, I'll sell a refill. I don't need it. I'm thinking about saving it, but we should have never bought a refill in the first place. That was really troll. Talked about that in part one. You just don't need it. It's not an important item on Nocturne. You full clear full HP anyways, or at least close enough to it. The scariest thing they have on their team is the Anivia MF backline. It's not going to be easy to deal with them. 
I'm only ever going to be able to jump on them in a team fight once Anivia Q is on a cooldown. If she has her Q and I jump on MF, I'm going to eat way too much crap, way too many abilities at once to spell shield her stun. I think Anivia is stunned. She can technically blow your spell shield with the first part before it pops too. Because it's a damage and a slow on the way out. And then when she reactivates it or once it finishes traveling, then it blows up. So it's a two-parter. So I don't know if we can really even spell shield it or if our timing just has to be insane. Level five. I'm thinking about just crossing over bot side here, though. They're playing so aggressive. They have item advantage. I could chew them up so hard, though, with space to chase. With that being said, now they're playing back all of a sudden. I don't even know if this is gankable now. I'm ghosting for it. Go for the Anivia, go for the Anivia. Yes! Oh, Kaisa got it. I really wanted that. I'm staying for the XP now. <laughs> she needs to get these minions. She's just going to waste them because she doesn't want me to take those minions. I hate it when people do that. Their concept, I would rather lose four minions guaranteed to make sure you don't get a minion. I wasn't going to take any anyways. I was just going to get them low for her. Down goes the Anivia. She lost her flash for it too. Good for them. We missed out on camps though. That's definitely going to slow us down. I could go in for dragon. Eh, I don't want to. I want to get a fast level six. Clad gets the solo kill. Okay, I thought this was going to be a fast game. I don't think it is now. I think this is gonna be slow. Wait, she took my camps. What a freaking butthole. Can't believe she actually took my camps there. Huh. Now I'm confused. Like, where did she go? Well, I guess I take mid wave. It is what it is. I would have rather ganked. Sometimes you don't have that option as a jungler. Sometimes you gotta just be a little leech and soak a wave. I'm gonna go kill her on her blue buff. She's gonna suffer for that. Bot lane's missing, her mid lane's missing, and I was on a ward. May have to change plan. Oh, cool. She just got scuttle as well. And her bot lane's missing. I'm gonna die here. What? Where is she? I'm so confused. I don't know where she went. She just like did scuttle and backed or something. I don't know if she even knew I was there. She shouldn't be able to see me if I hug, if I hug the wall. The scuttle can't see that. We're going to R on that. There we go. I got to leave. We got MF flash. That's good enough. Take some of that. We reset, get an eight minute umbral. Not bad. We could have gotten it way sooner if we just reset. Very, very nice. We'll go umbral, boots, and we could go Swifties, honestly. Swifties wouldn't be bad. Usually you look for Lucids on Nocturne, though. I think we just go double Herald and this game early since we already did a part one. No reason to drag it out. Dragons. First Herald's also better than first Dragon because you can get plates off of it. Even if you only get two plates, it's equivalent value to first Dragon, at least early on. If you can get a full turret, then you've got way more value. Especially first turret gold. Take these both at the same time. Very nice. Time of four for a full clear here. Far is on cooldown. There's no rush to gank. I also don't have ghost. Top isn't look okay. Well, it's kind of gankable now. Kled is about to get back on his little horse though. And GP's behind. Yeah, Peppy's gonna die here. Kled didn't even need to flash. If I went top side, GP still dies, but I could probably secure the kill on Kled. Was going to go for Herald. Doesn't make sense to anymore. Maybe I will just play for drags. That bot lane's perma-shoving. 
I wish people would stop perma shoving. There's no point to shove and just stand there. Look, look at him. Hey, I shoved the lane. Let's look at each other. You only shove lane so you can roam or dive. And you only dive if you get them low on HP. They're full HP. I'll use spell shield on this. Mitigate some damage. Also get that extra attack speed. I'm only doing against this drag or the flame one because they both attack really slow. The enemies are all missing. I need teammates to rotate. I don't want to get three man collapse doing dragon. That would really suck. Got it. Cool. Anivia has passive, so... I don't know. That gank doesn't make a lot of sense to me. For some reason, Ari's there. I kind of want to go in here, and I will. I'm getting hit by the Ari, and it feels bad. Nice. Missed my Q. Oh, she gets that kill too. Oh my god. She's at least going to have to reset or something. She can't just stay here. She burned her ignite and everything. Yeah, I could potentially turn on her there. It's not worth it. She's playing defensive. I don't know if she has flash still. Her Q is also a two-parter. We can't block the whole thing with our W to where she'll hit us with the backside of it. It's whatever. We only need our ghost to, at a certain point in this game. We don't really need it anymore. As long as we have R, the gank will work just fine. What I'm trying to say is ghost being on cooldown right now isn't the end of the world for us. It doesn't matter that much. But yeah, I kind of wasted it there. I should just backed off. Didn't think she's going to do that much damage and land everything. Land Q into E. Somehow Kaisa still dies. I guess because MF had item advantage. Of course, I'm going to stay for this XP. She's dead. The landers are always more than eager to share your camps with you. Might as well take this stuff. MF's going to miss it all anyways. We crash the wave. Things will reset for the Kai'Sa. And we get a huge chunk of gold and XP. Uh, let's go for this. We'll go for that. It's funny that Lucids aren't a recommended item on Nocturne. Lucids are really strong here in Season 12. Season 13, they're not as good. They're nerfed. Not quite as good. Whoa, it looks like the nerf might already be in. It's hard to tell. I, I thought it used to give item haste as well. I think they changed that recently. Her R is about to be on cooldown. If she stays for plates, she dies. Yeah, you're dead R. Oh, nice charm, buddy. But I'm still faster than you. We got her flash as well. Nocturne's really fast. If you can land your fear, they die because you move 90% faster into them. Or if you can just hit them with your Q, they usually die because you get 35% extra movement speed. That was hilarious. Kledar is a weird thing. It, it just straight up misses even when it's right on top of you. Is he really chasing? He's actually chasing me. He's not going to get me, though. He's just wasting all those minions. <laughs> He's wasted up one or two waves. What a funny guy. I think he was going to jump over the wall or something. I want this turret. We're somehow... How are we losing? We're actually losing. <laughs> we're, we're losing right now. They have more kills. We're winning, but by the kill scoreboard, we're losing. I would rather be us than them right now, that's for sure. Oh, wait, is there someone following me? I think there is. I don't know where their bot lane is. I think Rek'Sai's over here, too. Yeah, sure enough. Of course, they're all over here. Down you go, R. Your R's still on cooldown because you only have one point in it and no real ability haste items yet. Easy peasy. That was a great Nami E. Speed up and extra damage. Down goes the Anivia. We need to take turrets now. Fold back in for Dragon. I'll help take mid turret into red buff here. Even though lanes weren't that gankable early on, these teammates have been much more 
reactive than the last group. The last group, but they just didn't react. This group's actually reacting to my presence. It's an extra 60, 80. Holy crap. It's a lot of extra attack damage. I want red buff and I want these wraps. If R is up, I'd kill MF. Rek'Sai's bot side. She wouldn't come. Oh my gosh. She's so greedy. Oh wait. Is this really worded? I think that was really worded, dude. The way she walked up, tossed E at that type of range. That was weird. I think they're on Dragon now. I have no one to help me either. They just get it for free. That sucks. The jungler can just take it for free. My whole team backed when we had map pressure. I should try to get Herald. It's most likely warded since they're AD carry and, and the support were in the area. We can't contest that Dragon now. Whole team just decided it's time to reset there for some reason. It's unfortunate. Yep, big surprise it's warded. I don't think they can really stop me from taking it, especially since they're getting dragon right now, but... Oh my god, Rek'Sai didn't start dragon. <laughs> That's hilarious. Their AD carry might be on it, though. Some junglers aren't interested in objectives. I'm just leaving. I want to get this. She exhausted. We burn our ours only a one minute cooldown for us. It's kind of worth, especially since we didn't die. She didn't have exhaust. We would have killed her, I think, before Rek'Sai gets there. The movement speed slow alone is pretty annoying. I think they should remove exhaust or rework it. The fact that it's a movement speed slow and it's point and click is too good. They should just up the damage reduct from 35% to 40% and remove the movement speed slow because that's just too good. It's a Nasus with it. Everyone has a Nasus with it for free. Kind of crazy. Our team's throwing pretty hard right now. They're just dying. What are they even fighting for? There's no objective over there. They weren't fighting for a turret or for Herald or for Dragon. They're just fighting. Oh, they're chasing me right now. That's so annoying. Holy crap. <laughs> MF is so fast. Holy crap. She she can stand still to auto me. We both have tier two boots and I'm on ghost and she can kind of keep up. She's so fast, dude. This game's so losable. Like it is incredibly losable. Might need to go bruiser items now. Stride break or something for the MF. She's gonna be that fast. Maybe I should stick to Prowler, it's hard to say. Stride Breaks 50, 300 health, 20 ability haste. Mm. All right, we'll stick with the Prowler setup. We'll go Death Dance decks. Socks, if I turn, we guarantee died. I thought we could get away. MF's crazy overloaded, man, she's way too fast. We needed to hit her with something. Slow her down, but then she could have just popped W, so maybe that's not the move. She got so much shutdown off that as well. I think she got a thousand gold off that. It's insane. Our team's not playing together anymore at all. There was that one play where we were playing together, and now it's just Kaisa. I'm a split pusher. No, you're not. <laughs> Kaisa. Is not a split push champ with lethal tempo. I don't know, man. I'm not sure what the play is here. I think they just have the better comp. Get the Rek'Sai flash. Sick is your combo. Hit him with the Wombo. Gotta wait for R to come back up. That's the thing, their team's tough. Solo and Kled is never easy. They have a really good scaling AD carry and support. I don't see how Nami lives here. Yeah, I mean, I, what am I going to do to save her is the thing. 
I don't think I could savers. I can't slow them with my Q. I could walk at them and try to auto. That's about it. I can kill the MF and Ari. Oh, they're really doing Baron. Hey, friend. Oh, gotcha, MF. We're going to blue smite that guy inside the pit. I would rather just let Baron kill him. Oh, that's that's it. They threw. I don't think we can end off of it, but that's a massive gold swing. Went for the MF. She flashed. We prowled behind her. Down she goes. Oh, red buff as well. Very nice. Death Dance is kind of overloaded. I used to think this item was crap, but it's actually way too good. The amount of healing it gives you, it's also surprise factor. People don't expect it. They can't don't they don't expect what they can't see, and they can't really see how Death Dance is functioning. Yeah, thanks for the leash, boys. Appreciate you. My teammates give the best leashes, let me tell you. I'm trying to take a camp. <laughs> when they leash the look in their eyes, it almost seems like they're trying to take the camp. It's the weirdest thing. Even though they get less XP from it because they don't have jungle items. It's so strange. Imagine if junglers just got less XP from minions. That would that'd really suck. They kind of do because of Monster Hunter debuff. But Oh, I should have R'd him. Not going to do it without my fear though. That wouldn't make sense. I got a reset. We're sitting on so much gold. Untapped power. Let's dance into... I'm thinking Cleaver or Surlds. Or even GA here. Cleaver is a really scary item. Could go Bork for the Shred. Bork and Death Dance work ridiculously well together. They both heal you. If you can pinch the kill... The Death Dance will Giga heal you, and then the Bork always synergy with Nocturne W and uh, Lethal Tempo as well. So, to round off our build, I'm thinking we need HP or GA. We we need to go for Edge, Cleaver, or GA. That's what I'm thinking. Hey, friend. Oh, what's wrong? You can't stun me? Rest in pepperonis. We didn't even use our Prowlers versus her. Got behind him with the Prowlers, and he dies. How funny is that? Prowlers literally killed him there. We hit him with Prowlers, and it blocked his R. Oh my god, this item. It's too good. Simply too powerful. <laughs> it's still, if the enemy team has, like, double frontline, Leona Orn, you don't want to be playing Lethality Nocturne. <laughs> Lethality Nocturne versus double frontline is trash. They don't have double frontline at all. They have... An assassin jungler, basically, with Kled, who's a bruiser. I'll be taking this. Yeah, our Bork is shredding. Love having the extra attack speed. It feels great. I don't want to fight MF underneath a turret. Call me crazy. Doesn't seem like a good idea. Imagine that diving underneath a turret that has full HP against full HP people. It's not it's not gonna work out That's crazy, dude. You're telling me in a game where the enemies have more kills than you you shouldn't dive them 4v5 under a turret. That's that's new news to me. I Never knew that I'm gonna pop ghost. I want the extensions I'll Hit him with the E blue smite. Ooh, he flash. I'm not gonna full tank turret. He's gonna gore drink on my head You don't have minions though I'll go for bot, bot turret. Gotta keep our shutdown alive. We'll play for Dragon Soul at this point. Oof. That minion's not in turret range, my goodness. It's making me tank. There's no reason to stay, I can't get it. That was a funny TP. Down goes into the Misfortune. Azir shredding. 
Don't really have minions though. Down to a single minion, we can't end. We would need a full tank to guard tank for the minion on turret. Down you go. I haven't really used my prowlers much this game. Oh, dude, I'm getting so many flashes in this game. What the heck? It feels like every single time I are, they have flash. It's probably not every time, but it feels like it, the majority. After this inhib, it's time to reset. No reason to stay for what comes after that. Nami makes a great escape, massive bubble, down goes the Ari. They're starting to flail a bit. In fact, she has zero mesh taxes. Mental boom. It feels really bad when you purchase mesh and you lose all your Dark Soul stacks. Thanks for the leash, bud. Appreciate you. Teammates always willing to be little helpful friends. Was he going for Scuttle? What was that? Look like he's going straight for Scuttle Crab. He's hungry. Hmm. What do we go for here? Such a tough call. Cleaver, Guardian, or Edge. I don't know. They don't have that much armor, so we don't need Cleaver for the Shred aspect, but it gives other great stuff. Like extra movement speed. The ability haste. Yeah, they, the game's over. Zero scaled. We could rush down their base off that. Looks like we're going to be going for this. Hey, all right. Hit her with the Prowlers. Down she goes. Well played, to Ari. We block the Anivia thing. Hit her with the Fear. And down goes the Anivia. Well played. Very nice. He couldn't see us because of the darkness. <laughs> they, and our R put us on where the Rek'Sai used to be. So they just had no like, clue what was happening. <laughs> Pop my W into that. Kled can't fight this many people at once. Kled's more of a soloist, almost like Fiora. Hey, friend. Oh, you can't go that way. Nice try, though. Yeah, Nocturne is actually a lot of fun. He has a straightforward playstyle, full clear gank, full clear gank. Decent itemization options. Tank, Bruiser, Shredder. Very cool. So we got graphs. Looking at damage all enemy champions, we were the highest in the game by 978 damage. Very cool. For damage taken, middle of the pack. For runes, high value. Nocturne Jungle, a whole lot of fun. I like playing with Umbral right now. Great tempo. You guys should give it a try. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My name is Kingsticks. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.